So one of the massive challenges facing all of us across the globe is how we're gonna live sustainably in this generation, in the next generation, and the one after that. Um, and my talk today is thinking a bit about what do we do now so that we can bring about those kinds of futures, those sustainable futures, and those futures in equitable ways. So I'm gonna start with the story of Derek. Um, Derek, in this story, is a middle schooler. Um, he's Menominee and Blackfeet. He lives in an urban community. His family is part of the relocation era in the 1950s and 60s, and he represents the 78% of Native children that no longer live on reservations, but are often called the invisible population. Right, we don't see them. So Derek was a really great student for most of his early years, and his mom, who never graduated from high school, was really proud of him. She was at every community event, she was at every school event, and she was determined that Derek was going to become part of the 0.6% of Native people that graduate with an undergraduate degree. The percentage of folks that graduate with STEM degrees is an entirely different conversation that we'll get to. But his mom came and visited me at one point, um, and she uh, was really distraught because Derek was starting to say things like, school's not for me. That's not what I want to do, mom. I'm not going to do that. Um, and what ended up happening after a lot of different kinds of things, but one of the things that happened is that Derek joined the programs that we've been building for a while. We've been working in both schools and after school settings um, to develop science learning environments that actually engage native youth and other non-dominant communities in ways that not only increase achievement, but create different senses of possible futures. So um, Derek spent a lot of time in science classrooms that look a lot like this, okay? It's a pretty classical view of what's happening in science classrooms. In our programs, um, where we have been engaging with families and communities as co-designers to address some of the biggest uh, educational problems that communities face, we've been creating these environments. And our environments have three kinds of things going on. One, they're built on native ways of knowing when we're in native communities. That is that they're built on our cultural ways of, not, of knowing. We're not adding culture to them. Two, they're field-based which means that we're taking kids out of classrooms and we're bringing them into the full scope of scientific practices where they're actually outdoors, collecting data, investigating the phenomena as it is in the real world, right? Because science actually studies phenomena in the world. It's not only things in classrooms. Um, and the third is that we've been deliberately connecting them with mentors and helping them match what we're doing in classrooms to possible futures, okay? Something that actually doesn't happen in classrooms all the time. We don't actually motivate what we're learning in classrooms to how that can impact and help the world. What we often say to kids, this is how you'll graduate, right? And for lots of young people, saying that this is how you make yourself better without linking it to how it helps community is not motivating. It's a very individualistic model, and we have lots of kids in communities who have interdependent models who actually want to be motivated by making a contribution. So Derek. Um, joined our programs, and he actually ended up in our programs for five years. He's actually graduated now as an environmental engineer. But there was one day where we had um, some native scientists come, and they were uh, helping us um, take some soil samples, because we were investigating the health of an ecosystem. And uh, this scientist is taking up some soil, and Derek all of a sudden goes, wait a second, are you saying that this is science? Like, this is what you do for your job? Like every day you go outside and get to decide if things are healthy and figure out what to do about them. And Derek was blown away. The idea that you went, that scientists went outside to study phenomena had never occurred to him. And he had certainly never had that opportunity. And now Derek is actually finding jobs doing just that. So part of the reason this becomes really important is that not only is this a better way to science education, but over the past 20 years, the decline of young people being outdoors is enormous so that most young people spend less than 30 minutes a day outside. That's less than half the amount just 15 or 20 years ago. And with that decline also, become, also is a decline in our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health, and increasingly in our work, we're investigating our intellectual health. When we know less about the natural world, we reason about it differently, we make different decisions, um, and we value it differently. So if we're gonna shift the way that we think about constructing uh, possible futures, for us, shifting the way that we're actually engaging children learning about the natural world and phenomena in the natural world needs to be aligned with the kinds of things that we're after. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Um, so at a time when human communities have really hard, insightful choices to make, 
How are we creating learning environments that actually are aligned with those kinds of challenges? And how might we engage communities and families as being co-designers in their solutions? Thanks.